is more than meets the eye. I just saw Transformers 1. And it was so important and so grand and so great that I had to push the video I had scheduled to upload for tomorrow to next month because it's not good enough for the premiere of Transformers 1 weekend. Um, we must talk, friends. We must talk. Hey, friends. It's me, the Ebony Otaku. The well-rounded nerd. Yeah, she's transformer flexing 100%. Okay, and I might be a little louder than usual. So I recently purchased some microphones for my channel. Um, but you'll see them show up more next month. Um, but since I got it, I decided to use it now uh, for a one of those rare in real time videos. I know that's how important Transformers is. It was so important that on a summer night, I did not care what the weather was. We're wearing the hot rod hoodie because for important events, we dress. And she wore planet earrings too, fancy ones, but planet earrings nonetheless. That's how important moments like this are. <sighs> oh. Okay, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Shall we talk? Let's talk. First of all, there are several hills upon which my beautiful corpse may be laid. And this is one of them. Megatron is not wrong. Come for me. Not really cool. So my husband and I went to go see it tonight. Tonight being the... My chair is sinking. One second. This is going to be a janky video. The gasket in my chair is on my nerves lately. But my husband and I went to go see Transformers 1. Tonight, tonight is the 19th of September. The actual premiere is tomorrow, but you know how they do now. Like, you can always go the night before. So we got the privé seats, which means it's the 21 and up theater. Um, I love children. I really do. Not while I'm trying to watch a movie. <laughs> that I paid 20 bucks to see. Mm -mm, not, that's not the time. <laughs> Plus, it's my childhood. <laughs> it's not your childhood. It's my childhood. <laughs> but, joking. But that was a good time. So we bought the tickets a couple of weeks ago uh, when they went on sale. And it's a weeknight, so it's a good time to go to the movies. There's not a lot of folks there. Um, I very rarely do any kind of filming in public, like outside of my space, um, unless I can cut other people out because I don't like putting people up who didn't volunteer for that. Um, you know, if they're up for it, they're up for it. If they're not, you know, I'm not into that. Um, but I, held, I did have my husband help me do a little short filming uh, that I'm going to put up tomorrow <laughs> in honor of the Transformers 1 premiere because she went full dork tonight. Like, I have been bouncing off the walls all day. Like, in our team call today, um, at the end of the day, you know, boss is like, hey, personal professional check-in. What's your check-in? I was like, I'm going to see Transformers tonight. That was my check-in at my Fortune 50 company. <laughs> At my big age, that's what I cared about. I have one team member who cared. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> but, but no, it, it was a good time. Um, that's what's great about being in a, a nerdy house is we support each other's bovine scatology. It's a good time. But we, we did go see it tonight, and I am not going to spoil it. I think that's rude, especially for a movie that just came out. But here's what I will say. One... Our theater, so I'm sure others, if you're going this weekend, it's a good time because they were giving out free movie posters. So this is Megatron and the other one that they had, there might be others in different places, but the other one that they had was Alita 1, which y'all know I've got a few of her. I even have the prime Alita 1 over here in the shelving. Can you see her? She's like, right. no, she's just out of frame. Um, but yeah, I've even got Alita 1 as a prime over there. So I was super happy to get these. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. They'll probably end up getting framed and going in the game room because I actually really like them. They're just, they're just cool prints. When I say get framed, I mean my husband make a frame. Like I'm not going to go buy a frame. I have a woodworker for a husband. <laughs> Make frame. So I'm going to slide these. Actually, this is a safe place for them in between two shelves because then they will never get smushed. So I'm going to just slide those right there and let them live there until so then they're out of the way. So that was cool. So maybe your theater is giving away uh, stuff. Um, so that was cool. But then the other thing is for those of us who grew up with it. Now, I, I was too not alive to see <laughs> the original Transformers animated movie in theaters. Uh, but it, it is one that I grew up with. I'm a 90s kid. 
uh, we love the Transformers just as much as the 80s kids do. It, it was part of our Saturday morning cartoon thing. Like, it's just, it's that love, it's that nostalgia we all love. Here's what I think they did really well with this movie. Um, and this is how you don't get your, mo your, your video taken down. Because, look, look at the lack of clips. I don't know how that works and how people get away with it. I gave up trying because <laughs> it never worked for me. Um, but what they did really well was for a new generation coming in, they established the world. Because those of us who grew up with it and have all this Bobam scatology, we know the lore. We know who the characters are. We know what their relationships are supposed to be. You know, but, you know, if, you know, dad's bringing his sons or, you know, me, an auntie, bringing my niece and nephew, you know, whatever it is, parents bringing children they may not know all of that Gen 1 lore because, you know, there's there's Beast Wars, there's Legacy, there's whatever else, <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm just a Gen 1 girly. You know, I, I never watched Beast Wars. I, okay, I watched like two episodes and decided it wasn't for me. I've watched like one episode of Legacy, but I really am I'm a Gen 1 girl. I really loved um, when they brought out uh, the War for Cybertron series because it's very Gen 1 focused. And this movie is Gen 1 focused. Um, so it's it's like a Gen 1 origin story. I think we all get that from the trailers, like the, the Megatron Optimus Prime relationship, the D-16 Orion Pax relationship. How did these two brothers in arms become not so close? And I think they did a good job in the beginning of establishing, like, this is the world. So there's a new generation coming in that did not grow up with this. They don't know who these characters are. They tell them who the characters are, which they did. Now, for those of us who grew up with it, we might go... It was a little boring, but then it gets real good. <laughs> okay, so just hold on. And there's like plenty of that just stuff you love, the Easter egg drops. If you listen to the lingo they use, all the callbacks that are in there, it's just, it is chef's kiss. And then when it gets going, it really gets going. Um, I do know there were some folks who were like, well, this, they just turned Optimus and, and Megatron into a buddy cop story. They were never friends. New generation. This generation likes a story of an origin of friends who then weren't. And maybe in this trilogy, please be a trilogy. It's always a trilogy. They left it open for a sequel. They always do. Come on, get your coins. Um, but maybe they come back together. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> because when the properties we love get reproduced for a new generation, one, that brings commonality across generations. That's one of the reasons my husband and I love the show Only Murders in the Building. It's a great cross-generational collaboration. You know, you've got multiple gens going on at one time, working well together, bringing not just an entertaining show, but the relationships within the show actually feel genuine and you root for them. So when you take media and adapt it for a new generation, a new crowd, a new group, it's going to have to change to reflect the time in which it's being presented. Art reflects life. Whatever's happening in the world is what's going to show up in the art. And the world changes. So to get the youngins interested in this ridiculousness, it's got to adapt to the world that they're into. And I'm all for that because now there are kids I can talk to about Transformers. Like the other night when we were at our, uh, actually not even the other night, it was last night. There goes my chair again. One second. Last night when we were at the hobby store doing our weekly paint party, a couple of youngins came in. Um, one was about 12 or 13 and then I think his little brother. So parents were in the building somewhere. But we at our hobby store, they do a paint, uh, uh, what's called a brush and banter. So it's just a little like sponsored uh, time where the hobby store has paints. They're pro Quirrell, so it's pumps. I think it's actually sponsored by pro Quirrell. Um, I'm not sponsored. They are. <laughs> and then they've got brushes and water and palettes and all that kind of stuff. You can come in and sit and talk to folks and paint your figures. And these kids brought in something they wanted to build. and They were just standing there. And so all of us adults who were just goofing around were like, hey, what are you doing? And we started talking to them. They tell us the game that they're trying to play. And we're like, oh, well, what are you building here? And they had scenery. And they're like, well, we want to paint this. And we were like, you need primer. And one of the guys there, and I've got to find him the best wife. Because when I tell you he did a thing, I'm taking applications for him. <laughs> but... um. He, he's, he loves painting. He's actually a really good painter. He's just a good guy all around. And he's friends with my husband. So by association, we're friends as well. Um, one of our gaming buddies. And he went over, took the kids over to the paint area and like showed them the stuff they need and like gave them some, some rudimentary instructions. But he bought them a can, a rattle can of that primer base coat. And then he bought them a set of AK paints and he got them some snips and some glue. 
and show them how to put their stuff together and, and get started. That's bringing a new generation in, not telling that generation where well, you, you picked the wrong hobby or you're not doing my hobby correctly. No, y'all, that's dad material. I told you I'm taking applications for him. He's going to watch this video and be like, don't. And I'm like, nope, too late. We're going to find you one. But that was such a good moment of one generation intentionally bringing another generation in. And that's what they do with these properties. Nothing can stay the same. It's not possible. Um, there's some movie out right now. I don't even know what it's called, but it's actually a rehash of a Twilight Zone episode. I think it's on Netflix called The Uglies or something like that. I'm not, I'm not a movie reviewer at all, but if you didn't know, there's an episode of The Twilight Zone, a Rod Serling show from way back <laughs> in the early days of television where uh, people were just normal looking and then when they hit, I think it was like their 21st or 25th birthday, you got to go to basically a body shop and picked out your forever beautiful self because everybody has to look 25 forever. And there's a young lady in there who doesn't want to do that. She wants to keep herself the way she is because she likes herself. And her mother, who looks like she's her little sister because she's had the thing done where she's had herself put into a younger body. It's like, you need to do this. And they're all trying to convince her. And they basically force it on her. And then when she does it, she's like, oh, this is great. I'm so glad I did it. And they're like, yeah. And everyone looks the same. Like it's the, I, I saw that and I was just like, that's just a Twilight Zone episode. But that's how art works. Because the way it was presented in that media was different to the time that it was for. What people were thinking and looking at themselves and, and trying to become different set of circumstances to what we have today. Now, I've always said that people universally, we're, we're all after the same things. How we get there is what's different. We all want food. We all want shelter. We all, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We all want to provide for our family. We all need to sleep. All those things. We all want that. How we get there is a little bit different and how we want to get there changes over time and with society and all that good stuff that we're not going to get into today. All that to say this, give the movie a chance because one, I want another one. Don't you be the one to ruin it. Okay. All, all you critics out there who want to critic, critic on, on everything. I had to quit watching movie credits. I used to like pour over movie critic stuff because I was a theater and English major. So I like that kind of thing. Um, but there comes a point where it's just like, just be entertained. Just be entertained and be happy that a new generation is interested in the stuff that you like and find a way, a reason to bring them in to it. So the kids are into it. Yay. Because you know what that means? One, it, 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 it's connection between generations. But then, oh, and this is way more important, there's more action figures to collect. I've been to Target and Walmart. So I was torn on collecting any of the um, Transformers 1 figures because she has a lot of plastic. And I was actually getting to a point with this of Gen 1 where I basically had all the Gen 1 characters I wanted. There wasn't really anything else that was going to come out that I really wanted besides like the Lego Bumblebee and stuff like that. Like if they do a Lego Alita 1, obviously I'm getting that. But you know, I got a pretty good collection going. Like we're, we're kind of getting to the ceiling here. <laughs> like my Sailor Moon dolls. Uh, I hadn't bought a Sailor Moon doll in 15 or 20 years when they came out, you know, with this beautiful set of figures. And that was the first set of figures that had interested me from the Sailor Moon franchise in ages. So once I feel complete, I, I stay complete on figures. <sighs> But that, that nostalgia woke up. See, when, when they rebirth the properties that we love, it gives us more, more, uh, more merch. I'm merchy. <laughs> My husband, when we were dating, had this hoodie custom made. When he found out I like Transformers, he's the reason that he, no, that one is on my shelf. He got me Metroplex for my birthday the year we were dating. I bought Omega Supreme for myself, um, actually a few months before we met. Um, but he got me Metroplex as a surprise for my birthday. I don't even remember telling him about it. He's just psychic that way. Um, but yeah, he supports all my ridiculousness. I support his. Um, but in a, you know, in the wanderings, look, look, what do I always say? It's not my fault. It is not my fault that they put the action figures and the food and the engine oil <laughs> in the same store. It's not my fault. <laughs> okay. All right. So 
what's in the box. I, I was torn. Did I want anything else? And I just found myself getting really excited about this movie because there has not been something from the Transformers property as someone who grew up with that version of it that I wanted to see. Now, look, I've watched all the Michael Bay movies except for a couple of them. Um, I know not all of them are technically directed by Michael Bay. Some of them he's the executive producer, but he didn't, you know, actually direct them. They're okay. The first one with Shia LaBeouf, um, it's all right. It's not my favorite movie. It's all right. And when you first see it in theaters, it was like, oh, look at that little Optimus Prime. That's great. He's weird looking, but he's great. <laughs> you know? Um, and then, <laughs> you know, as they progressed, they just got more and more ridiculous. Which, though, if you think back to the Gen 1 and Gen 2 series, it was ridiculous as well. It's very campy, very dad jokey. Um, and they do a good job of honoring that in Transformers 1. I personally appreciate it. And I'll be honest, one of the best parts of Transformers 1, this is the only spoiler, very small spoiler, there are no humans. <laughs> yes! That was the best part of War for Cybertron. No humans! We do not need humans. Just give me fighting robots. It's, it's fighting robots, you're going to put humans in there. Why are they there? <laughs> we don't need humans. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. As I look at my Sam Witwicky um exit suit hanging on the wall but anywho but as a nostalgia welled up in me i was like okay you know you're gonna you know you're gonna want to get into the merching merch of the merchandise merch merch <laughs> so i started looking and i started thinking what are figures i would have wanted that i could not have had until now and one of them was orion pax and the other was d16 so Optimus and Megatron before they were Optimus and Megatron. I was like, I don't recall. There may have been, but I, I was a child, so memory. Um, I don't recall there ever being an Orion Pax figure. I don't recall there being a D16, a B, Alita 1 before she was Alita 1. I don't recall those figures there pre-existing. And another one I don't recall existing is Alpha Trion. Alpha Trion in like 12 minutes. <laughs> the entire Transformers series like he's this much of it but he's so impactful and I always want he was one of my favorite characters even though he's in there for this long I always wanted an Alpha Trion never found one I have a Quintus on <laughs> but never found an Alpha Trion so the prospect I, I have set a limit on myself on which Transformers I want um there are some that are already released. Some are pre-releases. There are three that I've ordered as pre-releases. One I don't even think exists yet. And two more, we'll see if they turn them into figures. But let's talk about what I've got and then something, the things that I've ordered. So Studio Series, I have to. I can't help myself. <laughs> so I love this. I don't get all the Studio Series. I'm not really into the side characters. There are characters that I love. And it's not a character that I'm like, ew, I love that one. I'm, I'm not going to get it. Um, but, phew. The reason I got this one is I'm probably going to be okay with opening him or his brother. Which one should I open first? Because I think they're both going to end up getting open. So this is Orion Pax. And they put Optimus Prime on there because some people might not know who Orion Pax is. Orion Pax is Optimus before he's Optimus. That's not a spoiler. That is known lore. Okay? Known lore. Um, but it's funny because he transforms into an almost pickup truck. <laughs> you know they don't turn into like the earth vehicles until teletran one you know, scans earth and turns them into something else it's a whole thing volcanoes were involved it's great um but i got him and he was right next to him so i was like oh they did a studio series of him kind of love him these two are probably going to get opened when i don't know but they weren't expensive um, because y'all know what's y'all know what time of year it is, don't you? The holidays are ring ting tingling, jing ting tingling too. They're on their way, <laughs> and when the holidays are on their way, and there's a new movie coming out, the merch be merchin'. And right now, the merch be the probably lowest price it's gonna be because what happens toward the holidays is they start eating the price up, and then they'll fake bring it down <laughs> when it gets closer. So like right now, figures that should be thirty dollars. I like 15, at least around me. I can't say that's true around you, but around me, that is very true. The other ones that I got, so that was at the Wally. -E. And then tonight, so I got those like a week or so ago. I've had them for a while. Um, I've talked about this before on my channel. My husband and I, this is just nerd love. You know, I got to insert, insert some nerd love advice in everything I do. Um, 
but you know, we're both professionals. We both do decent for ourselves in our careers. And, but one thing we do purposely in our world is gift each. <coughs> I don't know where that came from, but we gift each other spending money out of our paychecks. It's all one. We're, we're, we're husband and wife, so everything is one. But it feels good to go, here, husband, here's some do-what-you-want money. And here, wife, here's some do-what-you-want money. It feels good because I know that we've set aside in our budget, you know, aside from, you know, paying bills and saving and all that kind of stuff, have some fun. Life needs escapism, okay? There's a lot of stuff going on out there that's stupid, <laughs> all right? When I come home to my happy place, we're going to paint some Warhammer. We're, we're going to play some video games. We're going to look at our action figures. We're going to build some connects. That's what we do in this house. We're going to play some Magic Gathering, and all of that ridiculous out there can stay out there. Because when you come home, this should be your sanctuary. And if you can find a way to do that for your partner, find ways to have a budget for ridiculousness so that's where all this stuff comes from i actually hadn't bought anything in a long time i've been saving my uh, spending money spending money um for what i don't know i just hadn't seen anything i wanted um i know it seems like i'm real consumerist i'm actually a very picky consumer <laughs> like i have to like i have reasons to buy something and plus i also have a rule if i cannot display it it cannot come into the house or something has to shift or go out. Like I'm the same way with my wardrobe. Like I don't bring in like my, my regular wear clothes. I don't bring a new clothing item in unless something gets given away. That way I don't ever overdo it, but that's just me. That's too much about me. But I also went to the Target um, and nerdy love advice. Can't help it. And looked to see, uh, cause we're on our way to the theater uh, after having dinner. So we, we had a whole date night. Like uh, he's like, what do you want to eat? I was like, sushi. <laughs> So I had sushi. He had Mongolian and beef. It was a good time. Um, and then he needed coffee because um, the, the, the Transformers was for me. Deadpool was for both of us. Transformers was for me. So we had to get him some coffee. So we went to the Target because there's a Starbucks in there. Um, so I was like, uh, while you get your coffee, I'm going to wander to the back of the store. <laughs> and boom. <laughs> Megatron D16. Now, this is the version of him that has his transformation abilities. So he turns into a little tank. I'm fine with it. He's definitely going to get unboxed. So I'm looking forward to that. He he's he's gonna be a tank, so he has to join my desk army. Yes, yes. And then, okay. <sighs> this one though, I could not believe. And there was a sale. I'm going to put it up on my channel probably tonight or tomorrow in the community tab. If there's a Target near you, I don't know if this is in every Target, but at least Target near me, there was a sign on the Transformers figures that if you give them, you know, a sign up on their whatever the thing is, is it called Spot or something, whatever it's called, uh, their, their track you app, you know. Hey, I gave Target my information in exchange for 15% off. That's what this boils down to. And was it worth it? Absolutely. Look what I found. They had a daggum alpha try on. Yeah, they've got my phone number now and they can have it. I could not believe this was there. One, I'm going to give you the price. He was $19.99. Yeah, I know, right? Um, but this used to be $24. And then he was 15% off because I gave up my phone number and email address. Don't care. <laughs> Hashtag worth it. Um, but he's absolutely wonderful. I've never had one of these kind of, I don't know, mysterious Gen 1 characters as a figure. It's kind of like finding the Quintesson. Like, you didn't know you wanted it until you saw it. And I saw it and I was like, <sighs> again, it's not my fault that the coffee place and the action figures were in the same store. It's not my fault. But this just... <sighs> I was so happy. And the way he's utilized in the movie, I think they did a really good job um, of explaining the lore of the primes and all of that. So if you got youngins you want to take to this, it is kid friendly. There's like one swear word in the whole movie. And it's it's like one of the lighter ones. <laughs> so you'll be you'll be fine there. Um, but they did a really good job in honoring the lore of these characters. It felt reminiscent of all of this. But it also felt fresh for the new generation. And that's a hard thing to achieve. So I have to applaud artists and creators and the people that give us entertainment when they do something well. Because it's it's not easy to create a story that has mass appeal. It seems like it's easy, but it's not. There's a reason movies feel formulaic. Because there's a formula. <laughs> 
to get people to like it. It's just how we are. Um, but I really appreciate it. I appreciate the merch coming out. But on top of that, I did a couple of pre-orders. So Alita One's not out yet, but I pre-ordered her. And Bumblebee is not out yet. I pre-ordered him. Um, and when I say not out, I mean from the Transformers 1, the versions that I want. Um, so one... So over the next seven months, <laughs> I'll get, you know, Christmas in the mail, basically. Because uh, I think Alita comes out in like late October, November, and the Bumblebee I ordered comes out like next May. But I will have mine and I will have him for not $90. <laughs> so because like, let me tell you, I bought him when they when he first came out. I'm pointing at um, Omega Supreme here and I wouldn't try to buy him right now. Not in the budget. <laughs> he would not be in the budget uh, today. But again, I've said this before too, when it comes to like figures and stuff, sometimes it's just luck of being around and in a position at the right time. So never look at somebody else's collection and go, oh my God, I wish. Well, you know, like the people who do like the stacking stuff on the ticker talks and the YouTubes, like, ooh, look how perfect my fridge is. One, no one lives that way. <laughs> but also you have to remember that we're all on a journey and we all get to this in a different way. You are looking at 30 years of collecting. 35 years of collecting really because even when I was real little I would there are some figures back here that I've had in the box since I was seven years old because even as a kid I was like mm, that's too pretty to play with <laughs> we're gonna put that over there so don't don't look at that and go oh she got all of that overnight mm -mm. this this 35 years of my life back here and one day my stepson is going to inherit this and he's gonna be real happy about it <laughs> or if I get grandkids they'll get it um but never look at someone else's collection and go, oh, I wish, I wish, why can't I? We're all in a different place. You're on your journey. I've had my journey. Look at me. Look at my eyeballs. I like to give encouragement. You're going to get there. All right. And, and you know what? At the end of the day, it's still just plastic. <laughs> it's still just plastic and you can't take it with you. At the same time, escapism is 100% allowed. There's nothing wrong with enjoying life and the great things that humans create. The other thing that was really great, um, my stepson while we were in the movie sent me a link that I wish he had not sent me. <gasps> Too late now! <laughs> um, Converse is doing Transformers shoes. That's what I was holding on to my spending money for. There was a pair of Converse I saw that came out. I love Converse. Um, I'm six foot one, so I wear a women's 12. So when I get a pair of shoes, I hold on to them for years. They, they don't go anywhere. I, I take very good care of my shoes. And I take very good care of my clothes because I'm so stinking tall. Um, and I have disproportionately long legs. So I'm 6'1", but I have a 36-inch inseam. I am all legs. Just That's why I'm so good at Taekwondo because my legs just, whoo! <laughs> you know, I don't, even have to, I don't even have to be flexible to kick someone in the head. I'm just that tall. <laughs> but I am flexible. Um... I had a really good workout this morning, too. That might be why I'm so hype at 11.39 at night. <laughs> but um, they, he sent me a, 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 an Instagram ad, basically. And I don't really check my Instagram messages. So if you've ever Instagrammed me, I didn't check it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do Instagram DM. But he told me, he's like, oh, you need to go look at it. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll look at it. Y'all... why they make some Transformers Converse. <laughs> there was another pair I wanted that I had saved up for and it turned out they didn't make them in my size. So I was a little sad, but in general Converse tends to make unisex shoes. So they go from like a women's negative four to like a men's plus 45. <laughs> I made those numbers up. Don't come for me Converse. I'm very pro Converse. I should do like a walking reel of like my Converse collection. <laughs> I'll think about it. But I customize a couple of pair of Transformers Converse is what that comes down to. So, yeah, I'm real in. And one pair, um, one side has Optimus and one has Rodimus, like, on the outside. Yeah, I know. Um, but it'll match this hoodie really well. They should be here in about four weeks, I think. Um, I love those customizable shoe options. Whoever came up with that, because I know Converse does it, Nike does it, Adidas does it. I think they all do it. My chair is sinking again. Hold, please. I'm going to have to get a new gasket for this chair. It's on my nerves. It does that while I'm working. I'll be in the middle of teaching a class and like my head's just very funny. <laughs> but but yeah, so I got those. So they're, they'll be on their way in a little bit. Um, but yeah, it was a fun night. You know, give the movie a chance. D just give it a chance. I know we want to be purist with our properties. We're scared to let them go. 
because Star Wars happened. Look, it happened. Okay, but we can heal. All right, there, there's room for healing <laughs> out here in these nerd streets. Let's uh, give it a chance. There's no humans. It's completely animated. And there are moments in there that if you are of this generation, you're going to go, ah. <laughs> it was probably real good that we saw this movie in not a crowded theater because I was the annoying one. I'm in the back. Of, we, my husband got us the very top row in the center. And I was like, yeah, in like the RPX theater. So I'm just back there just acting a fool the whole time. And like there's there's no one close to us. Like there's like eight rows in between us and the next people. We can't even see each other. So it was great. I got to act as dumb as I wanted to <laughs> during the movie. Um you know but give give the movie a chance. Um go in there just to have a good time. I had Twizzlers, I, I had a, a, a what do they call it? An icy it's a good time. Just go in there to have a good time, have some escapism and nothing else um in the history of the world not not just american history but all over our planet when times are tough the one industry that never seems to suffer is entertainment because no matter how tough times get no matter how weird all of that out there is you know sometimes we got to come in here and just calm down calm down <laughs> and escapism lets us calm down so, you know, my ask is don't go into the movie trying to figure out all the things that are wrong with it. Go in there to figure out all the ways to enjoy it and just choosing to change one's lens, one's perspective can completely alter the experience that you're going to have. There are beloved figures that we can now co collect. We can talk to other generations about our properties and maybe just maybe we can look forward to them continuing this i do have one request though please continue it without the humans i had to get that out of my head while it was still fresh because i was bouncing in the car all the way home like i'm still hype not even sure i'm going to sleep <laughs> anytime soon because i am just and I have a class to teach in the morning, so I really need to get it together. <laughs> so, but if you can feel my joy, like I hope you have that kind of joy when you go to see this film and, and not just this one, but any of the stuff that gets remade. They remade Sailor Moon. They remade Fruits Basket. You know, they, they come in for Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings one day. Y'all know that, don't you? <laughs> Everything's going to get remade. But rather than, oh, no, they're destroying what I love. Somebody else loves what I love. Let me see what their perspective on it is. What is this new experience that I can have and share? Perspective is everything. It was a good time. I do probably should need to go to sleep. <laughs> so as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.